This is the General Electric Model 250 um, portable radio from 1946, right after the war. And this is what people took to the uh, to the beach if they wanted music. Thing is heavy and it's big, but it's uh, it's an interesting radio though. I'll show you later why that is the case. The radio works on two volts from a uh, lead acid battery. It also has a built-in charger. Of course those uh, batteries are kind of rare nowadays so I have it on a power supply. I'll show you that later. It has a uh, mechanical vibrator to uh, bring the two volt up to about 90 volts. Those vibrators are uh, very difficult to find so I uh, have a solid state vibrator in there now. That I'll show you in a minute. Let's first see how it works. I'm in the process of uh, restoring it. I first had to repair it. That is done. The next step is to clean all this and to repaint this. Uh, has uh, tone uh, charts on off, volume and tuning. Equal savings. Only has uh, broadcast band, medium wave. The renovations and repairs. Mom, I think everybody. Yeah, and you, you know, you just. Hey, it's all about being ready to make your move when the time is right. America's first news was... A lot of interference on the medium wave here. Eat a raw potato, and then within like 10 minutes, your muscles all pop and that... That's gone right to my belly. All right, that's fantastic. Uh, meanwhile, another story we talked about a few So the uh, uh, antenna, as we could just be a few hours The away. antenna is actually so in the here. The whole radio is made out of die-cast aluminum. Uh, with the exception of this here. This is some kind of backlight. And uh, there is a uh, there is a big uh, uh, coil that acts as the uh, antenna. For instance, if you close it, if I close the radio, it stops working because the antenna is now too close to the metal. And there's no smoking gun. There's no smoking gun to connect that he knew. So it has to be open in order to work properly. Help you find the right solution to make your home smarter and more connected. All right, let's have a look at the uh, inside. Like, like I told you, I have the radio working on uh, an external power supply. As you see, it is a radio uh, with uh, five tubes, four here. And one there, this is the uh, AC power cord that's coiled up. Uh, this is the uh, vibrator, like I said, I put a uh, solid state one in there that I will show you. Um, this is the uh, supply cable. Now I put three diodes here in series, normal silicon diodes, that will limit the voltage to 2.1 volt, each one is 0.7. And that prevents uh, from accidental high voltage. Uh, this is actually uh, not soldered on there. I, I came up with some with some connectors that uh, do not violate the originality of the radio. This is where the lead acid battery used to go. It was a pretty hefty one, two volts, 45 amp hours, and uh, they are not available anymore. Obviously, it was a wet battery, not a gel cell. And I've never seen a gel cell of that capacity in this size, so gel cell is nice, but they don't have the capacities of the old wet cells. Um, pretty traditional design, 
RF amplifier, uh, octode mixer, three sectional uh, 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 variable capacitor, one for the oscillator, one for the RF states, one for the uh, uh, states before the mixer. This is the uh, IF tube. These are the IF filters, 455 kilohertz. This is the um, uh, audio preamplifier, and here you see the uh, audio amplifier kind of tucked away. Under here is the uh, step-up transformer. Like I said, the vibrator. Now, I told you this whole thing is made out of die-cast aluminum. Everything. This lid here, the front section, the, sides, the side panels, and the whole chassis. This must have been quite a complex tool to make this. It's called a mold or a die, and this, this die has had moving parts to, uh, to make sure that you could get it out after uh, the injection molding. So, uh, must have been pretty expensive, you know. Uh, you have to sell a hell of a lot of radios to, uh, to earn the cost of that back. But uh, yeah, it's all die cast, uh, zinc alloy, aluminum probably. Up to this lid, except with the uh, exception of the uh, cover that I told you. Let's have a look at that uh, vibrator more closely. Okay, this is the vibrator. I built a solid state uh, vibrator in here. Here you see uh, an original vibrator. It's shot, as you can hear. I have not modified this one yet. It comes from another radio similar to this one. But this is the uh, solid state. Obviously, it doesn't rattle and it's much lighter I uh, I already started it shot but uh, I should not have done that so I'll have to open it up and show you the insides all right here we have the uh, vibrator again this is actually what came out of it mechanical vibrator two volts and this is what's in there right now A uh, solid state vibrator mounts in there perfectly, fits good. As you can see, I used uh, these uh, copper wires to mount it directly onto the pins, solder it on, uh, on this side. This pin is not used anymore because there was normally used to power the coil. This coil and that is not uh, needed. It's microprocessor controlled. These are MOSFETs and protection diodes. Here is the microprocessor. It actually uh, has a DC-DC converter on board. People said it couldn't be done. 2 volt vibrator. Well, here it is. It has a uh, converter that uh, can take... Uh, I think it starts at 1.5 volts and uh, Actually, it is protected. It works all the way to 6 volt and momentarily till 12 volts input. So, um, you could use it for a 6 volt radio as well. But it is primarily designed for a uh, 2 volt radio. Solid state vibrator for a 2 volt radio. The efficiency is uh, about the same as the mechanical vibrator. Assuming the mechanical vibrator would have good new contacts, of course, they drop off quickly with age. The input voltage of 2 volts, 2.1 volts, should yield 90, 85 to 90 volts uh, plate voltage in the radio, which it does perfectly. I'll show you that in a minute. But I found kind of nice that it fits in there so well. So that's the new solid state, and this is the old one. That I still need to uh, need to fix up. The nice thing about the uh, solid state vibrator is it, it also generates less RF hash. The mechanical ones always cause noise in the radio, and you don't have that anymore with this. This is called the RVB2. Um, let's um, put it back in the radio and look at the performance some more. All right, we're uh, we're basically uh, back in the radio again. I left the case off so you can see. Radio is switched on right now, and at the moment, 
I have it at. Uh, oops. Let's see what we have. Two point one volts through those uh, protector diodes that I was telling you about. The uh, diodes that I have here. Let's actually uh, show you the inside of the radio on the bottom side, chassis side, and uh, do some other voltage measurements. All right, here you see the. Uh, you see the inside of the radio. Now it's kind of funny, this radio is uh, from 1946, but the inside feels older. The way it's built and also the components used almost makes it look like pre-World War II. Also the tubes that are used are funny. That kind of tube was already replaced by then by miniature tubes, those smaller glass tubes. And they didn't use them in this radio. I don't know exactly why that is. But officially it was introduced into the market in 1946. It's possible that it was designed before that time, but never produced because of the war. In any case, it's uh, it's really... Uh, I told you this is all die-cast aluminum. And uh, even the top, except for the plastic, which is where the antenna resides. These are uh, these are uh, copper oxide rectifiers. They're actually not good anymore. I tested them. They uh, do not much uh, a diode function anymore. So this is the charge transformer. This is the uh, output transformer for the uh, audio stage. I probably have to replace these by uh, by Schottky diodes. But I also have to figure out what series resistor needs to go with that to limit the current, because these things had quite a, uh, a high, quite a high internal uh, internal resistance. Anyway, this is the uh, buffer capacitor for the power supply. I had to take that off and remove the insides and put new capacitors in there to make it look authentic. The only the only capacitor that I could not replace is the uh, 1200 microfarad 1.5 volt capacitor that uh, filters the uh, filament. So I uh, I got one there for now, uh, but I ordered a much smaller one since it only has to be uh, two volts, obviously. This is the RF section. I don't know if that's visible. Uh, I had to do quite a lot of fixing there. Some idiot had uh, do modifi done modifications. I have no idea what the intent of the modifications was, but the result was that the radio didn't work anymore, and that the uh, ref stage is turned into wideband with not enough gain. So I had to undo all that, and now it works like it uh, should. I had to realign it as well because that same idiot had uh, retuned the whole radio, but that's fixed as well. So, uh, this switch here, I had to take it out, repair it, clean it. This is the uh, on-off and charge switch, which is usually uh, bad. Uh, this was replaced in the past, probably by some repair guy, who actually did a fairly decent job. Different, different guy than the other one I was talking about, that's for sure. So I decided to leave that in place. Uh, this is another interesting thing. As you see, I put a lithium coin cell there. This radio needs a bias battery for the for the PA tube, for the audio tube. And uh, the one that was there was obviously shot. And uh, I think the original one was about 4 or 5 volts. This is 3.3, but it still works pretty good. So I decided to leave that. Like I said, this radio needs a 2-volt uh, lead-acid battery. Uh, these are very expensive. 
at least if you get the gel cells, because it's obviously the not a mass market product. A wet, a wet battery I have not been able to find, but I might buy one of those Cyclones. I think uh, I saw two 8 amp hour versions that you can put parallel. Pretty expensive, but hey, you know, if you fix up radios, you might as well spend that. So the next step is really to take uh, to take it all apart and uh, and refinish it. And this here needs to be all brushed that it shines uh, like new. These knobs need to be cleaned. But you know, it does work and quite well. It has pretty good sensitivity. But like I said, I have a tremendous amount of noise here. Not much to hear anymore on uh, on uh, on medium wave talk shows. Are not a lot of fun, and of course, uh, a lot of Spanish stations. But uh, nevertheless, this is a historic uh, item. By the way, here you see the speaker. It's a fairly big one, and uh, this is also made out of diecast aluminum. So they've made a whole bunch of molds for that. Like I said, it must have been an expensive radio to manufacture. Let's look at the voltages quickly. I promised you to do that. Uh, for that, I need to hook up the uh, the meter. Hang on for a second. All right. So the input voltage is 2.1 and the output voltage is 90 with the uh, solid state vibrator. And that's actually slightly better with the mechanical vibrator that I tested. Now the me mechanical vibrator is not good anymore. It might be better if I had clean contacts. But uh, here you can see what the manufacturer specifies. 85 to 90. With uh, 2.1 volts. Here you can see it draws 1.85 amps. I can show you that too, actually. Take this thing out of the... Here you see the uh, current. 2 amps, almost. This is the voltage, 2 volts. And we have about 1.85 exact, to be honest with you. That is the uh, the current that we're having. So this radio is really uh, working within specs. And the next step is now to uh, refinish it to make the outside look like new again. And that's it, the General Electric Model 250, a real oddball radio, but it works great and it is a pretty rugged design. Thank you for watching this video.